We really like to see people from other countries coming in our country because we can share ideas as the way I'm doing, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Now and we can become friends. We really thank you people coming here because you even contribute to our social things. National Park, Elephant Country, very nice park. We climbed Kilimanjaro. So yesterday we just came back and now the relaxing time starts. And here you can just relax, you stay in the car, you don't have to move a lot and yeah, you can just watch and, and see all the animals. So. I think it's um, $1,600 each, but it is okay because we know that the, the, the staff, they get a higher salary than with other companies, so that was really important for us. Why do they people uh, killing the elephants for the ivory? The thing you actually don't want to hear is the hunting to a reason. It means you are going to, to kill all generations of the animals. So when I was collecting plastic bottles, so people are saying, ah, I mean, our friend I mean, now is crazy, he's total crazy. He's clothing something that is dirty, is useless at the beach. You know, local people is like, we think that everything that you, are, you have to do, you need to get payment. I was feeling shy, running, like walking at the beach, collecting plastic bottles. So when I'm seeing my below local people I'm just hiding myself like I don't want to be seen but then I say it's okay whatever case happen I'm going to do it how we can protect our environment and how can we work with the in, uh, tourism industry. I got idea from them. I tried to speak with uh, my friends around the village and then we create um, NGO which is called uh, Jamabeko, it's Jambiani Marine and Beach Conservation. 
local people from Zanzibar, they didn't use water from the plastic bottle. We used our water from the port, Kalabash. So environmentals, it was very clean without any plastics. But now we have a lot of plastic which are produced from the tourist industry. They have to back with them rest over to the country. They live in the big land. They have a recycle, but here still we have a small island. We don't have enough place. People, they need a good guide to go underwater. Some of them, they, they don't have a good awareness. So they can let uh, tourists stand up uh, on coral, or they can let them tourists just to, to swim with a lot of uh, oil on the body. So you can protect it by the sun, but it's not much as like you can leave some thing on waters. Now, almost all the cost is run by a foreign or investor. They didn't respect the law that they have to live at least 15 or 20 meters from the coastal zone to have a free zone area. So now we don't have a free zone area for resting. Maybe when it's low tide they can come more, but when it's high tide, until when you have a permission from the, someone from the hotel. It's just only area, it's like here. The owner are local people. There were many, many natural coastal marine trees. They cut all of them. When they built a hotel on rock, they need sand and they come down to take sand. When they take sand, it means that they start to make more erosion. When they are in them countries, they make a good respect for the environment. But when they are here in Africa, they forgot and they just destroyed. Kipindi <laughs> They have like their day pack with their own stuff which weighs around 5 kilograms and then they have like the, the luggage to carry up which is 20 kilograms so they are carrying around all day 25 kilograms which is quite a lot. And we know also that the porters they had enough food. We heard before that like with some companies Sometimes they didn't have enough food because they didn't want to pay that much porters to reduce the price. Another issue is tip dependency because if you come as a visitor and you're going to have a relationship with the people that's going to host you or work for you, it's better to have that relationship balanced. If somebody is depending on your money for tips, then already you have an imbalanced relationship between the two people. So tip dependency can actually change behavior and local culture. 
it can make people pretend to laugh at your joke even if it wasn't funny just because of the money they depend on you of course if you don't pay those tips then the staff get less salary so you get a better price at the end but that means that the people who worked for you did not get enough money from that The corruption is there are some guests they are coming here with a low budget. So there are some people who want their money for their own pocket. They just take them and then they just list salary for the porters. The porters are just spending on tip and they overloaded the porters. And are uh, often uh, left without any other choice if they refuse to take the work. They don't have other job opportunities and because of their desperation for money, they become easily target for exploitation by the companies who prefer to maximize their own profits rather than pay fair salaries. So these companies who exploit people also know that it's better to keep a nice front with happy, friendly people. It's not obvious what is happening behind the scenes. For example, a lot of porters are not allowed to interact with the customers. There's always the guide in between to make sure that the porters stay to their own and the, uh, the climbers are kind of uh, kept in the illusion that everything is fine. Also, they can grab it for the tour and then they just give it back. Titanium bolts in, you need to have it fixed. We wanted to go only with a Tanzanian company because we wanted that our money stays here and doesn't go back to England or to America. <laughs> I think as a tourist you should more think about what you're doing and what you're paying for because if you buy like a mobile phone you spend like hundreds of dollars and you don't think about it and if you go traveling you, sh you just look at the price and, and want to go as cheap as possible. I came as a tourist in 2009 and I did all these tours and activities because I was earning a lot of money in the country I was living in, Sweden. I'm paying a lot of money and still the companies are not paying enough salary to their staff so that they're asking me as a customer for tips. In Sweden tip is very uh, voluntarily, it's something you add extra if you really want to. So for me it was strange why in 2010 or in these modern times, why should it be different anywhere else? So when I climbed Kilimanjaro I realized also that me trying to get a better price also meant that the people involved were being exploited. If I don't do it, why would anyone else do it? So that triggered me to start fair travel. Imagine that the company you're contacting gives you a transparent price so that you see exactly what you're paying for and where your money goes. Imagine that the company also tells you that the salaries they're paying their staff is enough so that you don't have to add extra with tips so that the people involved are actually satisfied with their earnings. Then imagine that the same trip generates some money profits for the organization you have chosen and that those money goes into reforestation, into protection of nature, into benefit of local communities who conserve their environments. So this is what fair travel is. We create a travel experience which both benefit the guests, the staff and the environment that we all depend on. From the society perspective, the companies, the organizations that are transparent are the ones who will last longer. Those are the ones who will prove that what they are saying that they're doing is actually happening. 
And people choose those type of organizations rather than the ones who say things they're doing but not doing. So this is unique and this is something that shouldn't be unique. It should be mainstream. We get something like 700,000 to a million visitors per year and this stands for 25 to 30 percent of the economy. I would say many of the local people here are disconnected from the tourism economy. The tourism economy is there, it's a bulk amount of money, but few people have access to it because of their opportunity, their education or their investment capital. Many people even don't know how do I get involved in the tourism economy. Here, so many hotels run by local people. They are not good for marketing. Tourists, they go direct to the resort, big resort, which is run by foreign peoples. So that is why here in front of our village, you can see that we don't have uh, so many tourists. Every hotel, now they have a desk inside for their tour. They have gift shop. If they don't have uh, any shop, it means that they can come out and buy from the local people. But now they do everything inside the hotel. But also, uh, local people or community, they are not to benefit according to the salary. How you can survive for $70 for one month here? People, they get salary, they benefit, but it's not a big benefit that they can have money to save for the next month. The situation here is demanding because people don't have enough income, they don't have enough money. So automatically they depend on me as a potential opportunity to get those things. So I'm tired of being treated like a source of income or being treated like a, a source of money. When you wake up in the morning and during the day you walk the streets and uh, Someone says Muzungu, which means white person, or someone is asking you for money, although they don't even know your name. Besides that, life here is also wonderful. It's very connected. The environment is not destroyed by the economy so that all the nature is gone and everything is tarmac and concrete jungle of a city. No, there is still hope here. If they are considering a camping safari, they might be afraid of uh, wildlife entering the campsite or entering their tents, which we usually need to explain that actually wildlife is usually more afraid of humans. Once you come to Tanzania, you're actually coming back to the roots of where you once left where our grandparents once left and migrated from this continent. So the amazing thing is that today we can come back with an airplane, with a flight, which takes maybe half a day. Whereas it took us hundreds of thousands of years to leave this continent on foot previously. But in reality, it's all the same people. And here you can see how similar people really are, even if they are behaving differently. So I think majority of people are nice people who really would want the world to be a better place, who want people to benefit, who want the environment to be safe and protected. But when the system is telling us to go for the money, to go for the profit, to think of ourselves and grow our own wealth, in such system many people are forced to think and live like that in order to benefit themselves. The issue is not the people, the issue is the system that forces people to act in certain ways. Money has no value, really. 
it's what you can get for money that has value. Or you can reforest a, a, an area that has been deforested. Then you see the value that that money can bring. If you just pile money on itself, it has no value. We're overusing our natural resources without any control of how much resources we actually have. We need to be aware that inequality in society creates an unsustainable society. So we need to follow these new models to make sure that people and our environment is benefiting from any business activity, not only tourism. Tourism is quite a new phenomenon globally. It's only a couple of decades where we have had this opportunity to travel anywhere on the planet within 24 hours. And this comes with a responsibility because our minds are becoming so much more open through tourism today that it also allows us to find solutions and better ways of conducting that tourism. So I think we're now that generation of active, productive people in the working age who can be part of these solutions and changes. Natural resource will be left and people they will come to visit because when they visit the country tourists, they would like to visit uh, nature. People from Africa now, they are in, on pipeline to destroy the environment. So they don't know much about the impact of environment. And the government, I think they are still quiet. Our government, they should make decision, environment or economy. People from America and the place where I told you, they should educate as Europe or other countries they protect environment because they already got results of destroyed environments. You know that uh, the sound when you are inside the room is not easy just to go out. But the sound of somebody who are outside the room is easy to throw. So people who try to supply awareness in Zanzibar, we are like we are inside the room. But people from outside, they are outside, outside the room. So when they shout or they sound things, it can go. And then I think we can improve. <laughs>